Good morning, White Lions. I hope all of you have been doing well. Um, I think all of you started school, so I hope all of you are excited about that and are learning a lot. Um, yeah, and I really miss all of you. Uh, we haven't been able to see each other for a year now, but hopefully soon God will let all of that work out. All right, so let's get today started and then I'll let you guys go and enjoy the rest of your weekend. All right. So let's put our hands together, bow our heads, all right, close our eyes, and let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for all that you've done, all that you continue to do, Lord. And, you know, times are getting kind of crazy, but Lord, we know that you are with us, that you will protect us. But most importantly, Lord, that you will just help those who truly need your help, Lord. So I ask that you put your hand of healing over those that are sick. And that you continue to protect the children, continue to protect their families. And Lord, just be with this nation and let us remember who it is that we are meant to worship, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Alright guys, so I thought now would be a good time to review what we went over in VBS. Just to, you know, remind you guys and also so that you guys can use it, you know, throughout the year, Okay. Uh, Because it is very, very good information. So, the armor of God, right? If you guys remember, there are six pieces. And these six pieces make up the full set, right? And if you guys remember, we talked about different examples of what each piece does, right? So, let's kind of go over them. So... The belt of truth, right? Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and the devil tempted him, right? He tried to make him turn the bread, or turn the stone into bread, and he also tried to get him to jump off a tall building. He also tried to get him to worship the devil. It didn't work, right? Because God used the Bible against the devil every time, despite the devil trying to use the Bible against Jesus. Here we have the breastplate of righteousness, right? And the story is very, very, very well known, right? We have David versus Goliath. You know, David chose to be a very, very righteous person, meaning he was always doing what was right. He never disobeyed his parents and he was chosen by God. And when God called him, he didn't run away despite having to fight this guy who was two, maybe even three times bigger than him, right? David didn't run away. He said, you know what? God is with me and I am righteous. And he struck him down, right? And then what's this? Yeah, it's a very tricky topic, right? So this is the Assyrian Empire. Remember that huge empire, right? And this was about the boots of peace, right? And what was the symbol of peace? Do you guys remember? That's right. Jesus Christ. His So Isaiah promised the kings of Judea that there would be a baby born, right? Of course, they didn't know at the time that it was going to happen almost, you know, a thousand years later. But at the end of the day, God fulfilled that promise where Jesus was born and peace came to the world. And then here, right, we have the tabernacle, the temple that, you know, people, only priests would be allowed to go into. And, you know, if they didn't clean themselves, if they didn't make the right sacrifice, guess what would happen? Yeah, that's right. God would punish them by killing them. So this one, we were talking about the helm of salvation because guess what? With that salvation, what do we not need anymore? Yeah, the tabernacle. We don't need this place where, you know, only priests can go into. No, you guys can talk directly to God simply by putting your hands together, closing your eyes and praying. Right? Isn't that amazing? Like, God made it so that we don't have to be so separate from him anymore. And then here, right, shield of faith, like 
This is Peter trying to walk on water. And if he actually had kept his faith in Jesus, right? Despite knowing that Jesus was walking on water. And Peter himself even walked like a you know, couple steps out on the water without falling. If he had kept himself faithful, he would not have fallen into the water and started drowning. And what's this right here? That's right. This is when Jesus took the legion of demons from that one man and put it into the pigs so that they would all drown, right? And that's the sword of the spirit. And it really is a sword, right? Because you can cut demons, you can cast them out, you can really harm them with that sword. But at the same time, does that sword... Um, do you think that it's meant to hurt people? No, right? You're supposed to use that sword to protect people. Just like you use a shield to protect yourself. Okay? So this is the full armor of God. Right? Now, there is a very, very important piece that I didn't go over with you guys. That, you know, I wanted to go over just before you guys... Well, I mean, it's still the beginning of the school year, but uh, I wanted to go over this so that you guys can carry it into the school year. Okay. So it says here, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. This in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So if you guys notice, over here it says, Stand firm, right? And then again, it says, your feet fitted, okay? And then in the next verse, it says, take up the shield. And it also says, take the helmet of salvation, right? And also the sword of the spirit. And it also says, pray in the spirit on all occasions, right? Notice that all of these verbs, they're, they're verbs, right? They're not just saying, oh, let it happen to you or just lie there. Don't do anything. No, it's you have to be active about it. You have to take it, put it on, wear it, and then you use it, okay? It's not like you could skip any of those steps. You can't just like hope that God will put it on you and then it's going to work magically and you don't have to do anything. No, you have to actively wear them. You have to actively use them. Now, how do you put these on? That's the real question. And the answer is you have to read the Bible. Okay. If you don't know what righteousness is, if you don't know what peace is, truth, if you don't know what salvation is, faith, and spirit, if you don't know what those things are, how are you going to hold it and use it? You can't, right? You can't use something that you don't know exists. So that's the most important thing about the armor of God. All right. You have to know what they are. And at the same time, you have to choose to put it on you have to choose to use it otherwise it's just there it's just knowledge or hunks of spiritual metal that exist but it's not doing anything for you okay so i want you guys to really take that to heart okay and with this semester use those things you know for your school for your daily life for your friends, everything, okay? Because right now, it's dangerous times, and I want you guys to be able to protect yourself, especially if 
you know, the devil decides to try and trick you guys, all right? I know you guys are smart. I know you guys love God. But, you know, the devil, he's very, very tricky. But if you have all that armor on, you guys are going to be perfectly fine, okay? So, that's what I wanted to go over today. Great job, you guys. Um, thank you for listening and always being such good students. And hopefully soon we'll get to see each other, you know, and get to really enjoy God's presence together. But for now, let's be safe. Uh, let's be very patient with each other and let's obey our parents and really help them out in these times. Okay. All right, guys. So I'm going to pray. So let's close our eyes, bow our heads, put our hands together and I'll go ahead and close this out. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for just reminding us about the armor of God, but also teaching us that the most important thing is that we choose to take on that armor, that we choose to use the holy metals that you've given us so that we can defend ourselves, defend our friends, defend our families, and Lord, just help protect other people out there. And Lord, I ask that you be upon the church, be upon the church members, the children, the family, the staff, and especially the pastor, Lord. Put your hands on them, Lord. Protect them, guide them, bless them. And Lord, just instill in them a renewed faith. It is a new year. Um, coronavirus is still going on. There have been a lot of complications with politics, Lord. But I ask that we remember that you have everything in your hands, Lord, and that we remain faithful to you, Lord. Forgive us of our sins, give us new hope, and Lord, let us just be more faithful each and every day. Thank you for everything you've done. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right. Great job, everybody. I'm very proud of you, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you all, you know, very soon, all right? Hang in there. All right. Bye.